Welcome back. Well, it is the week of Thanksgiving, and right now we are going to travel to Plymouth to find out exactly why that's a great place to spend the holiday. I spoke with an individual there at an outdoor museum. It was a great conversation. Let's take a look. Thanksgiving is right around the corner, and the annual scramble to supermarkets for cranberry sauce, pumpkin pie filling has been celebrated in late November for generations. Richard Pickering, historian and deputy director of the Plymouth Pawtuxet Museum, join us live today from Plymouth, Massachusetts, with the dramatic story of how the American holiday got started. Richard, thanks for joining us. How are you? Uh, I'm having a wonderful time. Behind me, we've got three or four elementary schools that are here to learn about uh, Plymouth history and Thanksgiving. So we just finished up a, a drill where the little kids were learning how to be soldiers in Plymouth, with Captain Miles Standish leading them in their drill. Why is Plymouth, Massachusetts, America's hometown? Uh, if you open any American history textbook, Plymouth is there at the beginning. And where I am standing, think about all the history that has happened here. 12,000 years of Native Americans living on this soil. 400 years ago, Mayflower arrives at Plymouth Rock. Mayflower Compact, which is the source of America's constitutional tradition, and then it's the home of the most beloved holiday. 90% of Americans say they celebrate Thanksgiving more than any other holiday in the annual cycle. Why is the first Thanksgiving at Plymouth considered America's first Thanksgiving, even though there were ancient Native American Thanksgivings and Thanksgiving rituals in the other colonies? Uh, New Englanders took their traditions to the rest of the country, that even though the 1621 Harvest Festival was forgotten for a while until it was rediscovered in a letter in the 1830s, it started a New England practice of families gathering after harvest was in, particularly when they were spread out across the region. New Englanders then took the holiday west with them, and there was a writer by the name of Sarah J. Hale. She was kind of like the Martha Stewart of her day, and she had a powerful women's magazine called Godey's Ladies Book. And from 1820 to 1850s, she taught the rest of America's women how to celebrate a New England Thanksgiving, and it was her constant urging that finally got Abraham Lincoln to declare a national day of Thanksgiving for the first time in decades. So she was looking backwards at her New England ancestors and at Plymouth. And for me, what is beautiful about this holiday is there's always a place for someone at the table. And if you look at the original communities, indigenous communities and an English community reaching toward one another after horrific losses due to epidemic among the native people. Half of the Mayflower passengers die the first year. These people are reaching towards one another in their fragility, making one another stronger. The meal today is a place where new Americans are made welcome. I host the museum's Thanksgiving dinners and invariably as I'm circulating among the tables, someone grabs my blazer and says, Richard, I'm a new American. I was just naturalized, and I wanted my first Thanksgiving as an American to be where it all started, that it just is a welcoming place for everyone. How is our turkey and pumpkin pie different from the pilgrims? and? Pocanoke's experience of turkeys and pumpkins. Well, what I love, there's a recent book on Thanksgiving where the author says there are four pillars to the holiday, turkey, cranberry sauce, pumpkin pie, and depending on what your family likes, either stuffing or mashed potatoes. What I love is that four centuries later, we are still using the same ingredients from the first Thanksgiving, even though in different ways. How many Americans now go out and shoot their turkey for the holiday? We buy big farm-raised turkeys. They're typically roasted. A pilgrim never would have tried to fry a turkey. In 1621, I suspect most of the turkeys were boiled and seasoned because of the work that it takes to roast and be at a spit all the time. English grain didn't do well the first year, so no flour for pie crust. 
So pumpkins were boiled slowly, and as they softened, butter is folded into them, and then spices like nutmeg to give them flavor. So I love the fact that we have the same things on our table. We're just using them differently, and they have different primary place. In the, 17, in the 16th century, in the 17th century, the turkey would have been one among many Ingre uh, many things on the table. It's in the 19th century, in the 1800s, that the turkey becomes the most important thing on the table. And it would take a while for pumpkin to go from being a stew to being a dessert. What can we do and how can we plan a visit to Plymouth? Uh, I urge everyone, spend a Thanksgiving of your life in Plymouth. Be where it all started. It will connect you to our nation's past in such deep and meaningful ways. You can discover how to come and see the museums here, experience the whale watches, board Mayflower too, and be on a repro of the ship that brought the pilgrims here by visiting the website cplymouth.com or p-l-i-m-o-t-h dot o-r-g if you'd like to learn more about the museum. Well, thank you so much, Richard, for joining us today. Really appreciate this discussion all about Thanksgiving, and I hope that you have a great Thanksgiving and holiday season. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours, too. Thank you.